Hello, Familia. Glory be to God for another day. I have our daily bread today for today, and I actually may have more later, but um, I felt led to do um, one of the Jewish readings that includes, you know, obviously the Messianic readings along with it in regards to Genesis chapter 40. And so that will be what we will start with. And um, there's corresponding scriptures that go along with that. And so that's what we'll be reading along with that. Um, although I have a feeling we're going to expand it a little bit more than the verses that are given. <laughs> Glory be to God. Let your words be spoken, Father God, not mine. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. I give you all thanks and glory and honor and thanksgiving for all that you are and all that you're going to do and all that you have done. Hallelujah and amen. So we're going to start with Genesis chapter 40. After this, the Egyptians king or the Egyptian kings, cupbearer and baker, offended their master, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, and put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, in the prison where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard assigned Joseph to them, and he became their personal attendant. Glory be to God for the things he strategically does in our life, Familia. Glory be to God. And they were in custody for some time. The Egyptian kings, cupbearer and baker, who were confined in the prison, each had a dream. Both had a dream on the same night, and each dream had its own meaning. When Joseph came to them in the morning, he saw that they looked distraught. So he asked Pharaoh's officers, who were in custody with him in his master's house, Why do you look so sad today? We had dreams, they said to him, but there is no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, Don't interpretations belong to God? Hallelujah, they do. Tell me your dreams. So the chief cupbearer told his dream to Joseph. In my dream, there was a vine in front of me. On the vine were three branches. As soon as it budded, it, its blossoms came out and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand and I took the grapes, squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. This is its interpretation, Joseph said to him. The three branches are three days. In just three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your position. You will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand the way you used to when you were his cupbearer. But when all goes well for you, remember that I was with you. Please show kindness to me by mentioning me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison. For I was kidnapped from the land of the Hebrews. And even here I have done nothing that they should put me in the dungeon. When the chief baker saw the interpretation was positive, he said to Joseph, I also had a dream. Three baskets of white bread were on my head. In the top basket were all sorts of baked goods for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. This is its interpretation, Joseph replied. The three baskets are three days. In just three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head from off of you and hang you on a tree. Then the birds will eat the flesh from your body. On the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, he gave a feast for all his servants. He lifted up the head of the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. Pharaoh restored the chief cupbearer to his position as cupbearer, and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But Pharaoh hanged the chief baker, just as Joseph had explained to them. Yet the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. Or Joseph, but also praise be to God for all that Joseph had to go through because he saved many by allowing what happened to Joseph to go for him to go through it. He allowed it into his life, and because of that, many were saved. And so, I gotta be gotta be real with you, Familia. That is my prayer too. That because Jesus already did the work. And he already saved everyone on the cross. And that all we have to do is just believe and trust. I pray that everything that I go through will save many. Not because I am anybody special or because, you know, God loves me more. <laughs> or 
you know, because I want to be special or because I feel like, oh, that's going to get me all kinds of great things if I save a bunch of people. No, because the credit will always go to Yahweh. Always. I get zero credit. None. <laughs> I get negative 50% credit for anything that I do. That is of his will and um, in accordance with scriptures. Anything outside of that, it's my fault. <laughs> any sins, any failures, any transgressions, I take a billion percent of credit for that. But anything good, nope. Oh God, in Jesus' name. And so the next reading is Amos chapter 2, verses um, 6, or starting with verse 6 and then going through chapter 3, verse 8. But I think I'm going to start at the beginning of Amos 2. And then we'll just kind of go from there, Abba Father. <laughs> the Lord says, Will not relent from punishing Moab for three crimes, even four. Because he burned the bones of the king of Edom, Palim. Therefore I will send fire against Moab, and it will consume the citadels of Kerioth. Moab will die with the tumult, the shouting, and the sound of a ram's horn. I will cut off the judge from the land and kill all its officials with him. The Lord has spoken. The Lord says, I will not relent from punishing Judah for three crimes, even four because they have rejected the instruction of the Lord and have not kept his statutes. The lies that their ancestors followed have led them astray. Therefore I will send fire against Judah, and it will consume the citadels of Jerusalem. The Lord says, I will not relent from punishing Israel for three crimes, even four, because they sell a righteous person for silver and a needy person for a pair of sandals. They trample the heads of the poor and the dust of the ground to block the path of the needy. A man and his father have sexual relations with the same girl, profaning my holy name. They stretch out beside every altar on garments taken as collateral. And in the house of their God, they drink wine obtained through fines. Yet I destroyed the Amorite as Israel advanced. His height was like the cedars, and he was as sturdy as the oaks. I destroyed his fruit above and his roots beneath, and I brought you from the land of Egypt and led you forty years in the wilderness in order to possess the land of the Amorite. I raised up some of your sons as prophets and some of your young men as Nazarites. Is this not the case, Israelites? This is the Lord's declaration. But you made the Nazarites drink wine and commanded the prophets, do not prophesy. Look, I am about to crush you in your place. As a wagon full of sheaves crushes grain, escape will fail the swift. The strong will not prevail by his strength, and the brave will not save his life. The archer will not stand his ground. <clears throat> the one who is swift of foot will not save himself, and the one riding a horse will not save his life. Even the most courageous of warriors will flee naked on that day. This is the Lord's declaration. This is Amos chapter 3. Listen to this message that the Lord has spoken against you, Israelites, against the entire clan that I brought from the land of Egypt. I have known only you out of all the clans of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together without agreeing to meet? Does a lion roar in the forest when it has no prey? Does a young lion growl from its lair unless it has captured something? Does a bird land in a trap on the ground if there is no bait for it? Does a trap spring from the ground when it has caught nothing? If a ram's horn is blown in a city, aren't people afraid? If a disaster occurs in a city, hasn't the Lord done it? Indeed, the Lord God does nothing without revealing his counsel to his servants, the prophets. Glory be to God. Thank you, Abba Father, that you are the same today, always and forever. Glory be to God. A lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who will not prophesy? Proclaim on the citadels of in Ashdod 
and on the citadels in the land of Egypt, assemble on the mountains of Samaria, and see the great turmoil in the city and the acts of oppression within it. The people are incapable of doing right. This is the Lord's declaration. Those who store up violence and destruction in their citadels. Therefore, the Lord God says, an enemy will surround the land. He will destroy your strongholds and plunder your citadels. The Lord says, as the shepherd snatches two legs or a piece of an ear from the lion's mouth, so the Israelites who live in Samaria will be rescued with only the corner of a bed or the cushion of a couch. Listen and testify against the house of Yaakov. This is the declaration of the Lord God, the God of hosts. I will punish the altars of Bethel on the day I punish Israel for its crimes. The horns of the altar will be cut off and fall to the ground. I will demolish the winter house and the summer house. The houses inlaid with ivory will be destroyed and the great houses will come to an end. This is the Lord's declaration. Glory be to God. Hallelujah and amen. Let all the houses built by men fall. In Jesus' name, and let only your house, Father God, stand. And I do want to continue reading into chapter 4, and we'll kind of just let Spirit guide me on where to stop. It says, listen to this message, you cows of Bashan, who are on the hill of Samaria, women who oppress the poor and crush the needy, who say to their husbands, bring us something to drink. The Lord God has sworn by his holiness. Look, the days are coming when you will be taken away with hooks. Every last one of you with fish hooks. You will go through breaches in the wall. Each woman straight ahead and you will be driven along toward Haramon. This is the Lord's declaration. Come to Bethel and rebel. Rebel even more at Gilgal. Bring your sacrifices every morning, your tents every three days. Offer leavened bread as a thank offering and loudly proclaim your free will offerings. For that is what you Israelites love to do. This is the Lord's declaration. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I gave you absolutely, <clears throat> excuse me. I gave you absolutely nothing to eat in all your cities. A shortage of food in all your communities. Yet you did not return to me. This is the Lord's declaration. I also withheld the rain from you while there were still three months until harvest. I sent, sent rain on one city, but no rain on another. One field received rain while a field with no rain withered. Two or three cities staggered to another city to drink water, but were not satisfied. Yet you did not return to me. This is the Lord's declaration. I struck you with blight and mildew. The locust devoured your many gardens and vineyards, your fig trees and olive trees, yet you did not return to me. This is the Lord's declaration. I sent plagues like those of Egypt. I killed your young men with the sword, along with your captured horses. I caused the stench of your camp to fill your nostrils, yet you did not return to me. This is the Lord's declaration. I overthrew some of you as I overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and you were like a burning stick snatched from a fire, yet you did not return to me. This is the Lord's declaration. Lord have mercy. Therefore, Israel, that is what I will do to you. And since I will do that to you, Israel, prepare to meet your God. He is here, the one who forms the mountains, creates the wind, and reveals his thoughts to man. The one who makes the dawn out of darkness and strides on the heights of the earth. Yahweh, the God of hosts, is his name. He's saying just one more, five. And then we'll go on to Acts um, for the Messianic reading. Listen to this message that I am singing for you. A lament, the house of Israel. She has fallen. Virgin Israel will never rise again. She lies abandoned on her land with no one to raise her up. For the Lord God says the city that marches out a thousand strong will only have a hundred left. And the one that marches out a hundred strong will only have ten left in the house of Israel. For the Lord says to the house of Israel, seek me and live. 
Do not seek Bethel or go to Gilgal or journey to Beersheba, for Gilgal will certainly go into exile and Bethel will come to nothing. Seek Yahweh and live, for he will spread like fire throughout the house of Joseph. It will consume everything with no one at Bethel to extinguish it. Those who turn and turn justice into wormwood throw righteousness to the ground. The one who made the Pleiades and Orion, who turns darkness into dawn and darkens day into night, who summons the water of the waters of the sea and pours them out over the face of the earth. Yahweh is his name. He brings destruction on the strong and it falls on the stronghold. They hate the one who convicts the guilty at the city gate and despise the one who speaks with integrity. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and exact a grain tax from him, you will never live in the houses of cut stone you have built. You will never drink the wine from the lush vineyards you have planted. For I know your crimes are many and your sins innumerable. They oppress the righteous, take a bribe, and deprive the poor of justice at the gates. Therefore, the wise person will keep silent at such time. For the days are evil. Seek good and not evil, so that you may live, and the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, as you have claimed. Hate evil and love good. Establish justice in the gate. Perhaps the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Therefore, Yahweh, the God of hosts, the Lord says, there will be wailing in all the public squares. They will cry out in anguish in all the streets. The farmer will be called on to mourn and professional mourners to wail. There will be wailing in all the vineyards, for I will pass among you. The Lord has spoken. Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. What will the day of the Lord be for you? It will be darkness and not light. It will be like a man who flees from a lion only to have a bear confront him. It goes home and rests his hand against the wall. <clears throat> only to have a snake bite him. Won't the day of the Lord be darkness rather than light? Even gloom without any brightness in it. I hate. I despise your feasts. I can't stand the stench of your solemn assemblies. Even if you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. I will have no regard for your fellowship offerings or fattened cattle. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps, but let justice flow like water and righteousness like an unfailing stream. Hallelujah and amen, Father God. House of Israel, was it sacrifices and grain offerings that you presented to me during the 40 years in the wilderness? But you have taken up Sukkoth, your king, and Kaiwan, your star god, images you have made yourselves, you have made for yourselves. So I will send you into exile beyond Damascus. Yahweh, the God of hosts, is his name. He has spoken. Glory be to God. Glory be to God, he's spoken. This is Acts chapter 7, 9 through 16, specifically 9 and 10, where the... the focus scriptures, but I'm going to go ahead and just read Acts 7, because um, the sermon of Stephen, glory be to God for that man, glory be to God for him. Is this true? The high priest asked. Brothers and fathers, he said, listen, the God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he settled in Haran. And said to him, Get out of your country and away from your relatives and come to the land that I will show you. It's in Genesis 12 and 1. Then he came out of the land of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. From there, after his father died, God had, excuse me, God had had him move to this land you now live in. He didn't give him an inheritance in it, not <clears throat> even a foot of ground, but he promised to give it to him as a possession and to his descendants after him, even though he was childless. God spoke in this way. Glory be to God. That's our confidence, Familia. That's my faith and my confidence in the Lord, that even if I don't see what he's promised in the land of the living, I know that it'll come in my life of eternity with God. Let us all stand in that hope today and all our days. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. 
Hallelujah and amen, Abba Father. <laughs> Let's see, where did I leave off at? Forgive me. God spoke in this way, verse 6. His descendants would be strangers in a foreign country, and they would enslave and oppress them 400 years. I will judge the nation that they will serve as slaves. God said, after this, they will come out and worship me in this place. That's in Genesis chapter 15, verses 13 to 14. Then he gave him, gave him the covenant of circumcision. After this, he fathered Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. Isaac did the same with Yachov and Yachov uh, with the twelve patriarchs. The patriarchs became jealous of Joseph and sold him into Egypt. But God was with him and rescued him out of all his troubles. He gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who appointed him ruler over Egypt and over his whole household. Then a famine and great suffering came over all of Egypt and Canaan, and our ancestors could find no food. When Yaakov heard there was grain in Egypt, he sent our ancestors the first time. The second time, Joseph was revealed to his brothers, and Joseph's family became known to Pharaoh. Joseph then invited his father, Yaakov, and all his relatives, 75 people in all, and Jacob went down to Egypt. He and our ancestors died there, were carried back to Shechem, and were placed in the tomb that Abraham had bought for some of silver from the sons of Hamor in Shechem. As the time was drawing near to fulfill the promise that God had made to Abraham, the people flourished and multiplied in Egypt until a different king who did not know Joseph ruled over Egypt. He dealt deceitfully with our race and oppressed our ancestors by making them leave their infants outside so they wouldn't survive. At this time, Moses was born, he, and he was beautiful in God's sight. He was cared for at his father's home three months. And when he was left outside, Pharaoh's daughter adopted and raised him as her own son. So Moshe was ed educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in his speech and actions. As he was approaching the age of 40, he decided to visit his brothers, the Israelites. When he saw one of them being mistreated, he came to his rescue and avenged the oppressed man by striking down the Egyptian. He assumed his brothers would understand that God would give them deliverance through him they did not understand. The next day he showed up while they were fighting and tried to reconcile them peacefully, saying, Men, you are brothers. Why are you mistreating each other, familia? You are bone of bone and flesh of flesh with each other. We have got to start loving each other. In the mighty name of Jesus, help us, Lord, because you know we can't without you. Abba, Father, we just can't. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry we can't. Please help us, Abba. Hallelujah and amen. <laughs> Glory be to God. The one who was mistreating his neighbor pushed him away, saying, Who appointed you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you want to kill me the same way you killed the Egyptian yesterday? That's in Exodus chapter 2 and 14. At this disclosure, Moshe fled and became an exile in the land of Midian, where he fathered two sons. After 40 years had passed, an angel appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, in the flame of a burning bush. When Moshe saw it, he was amazed at the sight. As he appro was approaching to look at it, the voice of the Lord came, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. So Moshe began to tremble and did not dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I have observed it. I have observed the oppression, rather, of my people in Egypt. I have heard their groaning and have come down to rescue them. And now come, I will send you to Egypt. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It's in Exodus 3, 5, um, and also verses 7 and 8 and verse 10. This Moshe, whom they rejected when they said, Who, do, who appointed you a ruler and a judge? This one God sent as a ruler and a redeemer by means of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. This man led them out and performed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt, at the Red Sea, and in the wilderness forty years. This is the Moshe who said to the Israelites, God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your brothers. Glory be to God, he did, Lord Yeshua. 
That's in Deuteronomy chapter 18 and 15. He is the one who is in the congregation in the wilderness together with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our ancestors. He received living oracles to give to us. Our ancestors were unwilling to obey him, but pushed him away and in their hearts turned back to Egypt. They told Aaron, make us gods who will go before us. As for this Moses who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what's happened to him. Then even ma they even made a calf in those days, offered sacrifice to the idol, and were celebrating what their hands had made. And God turned away and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. House of Israel, did you bring me offerings and sacrifices forty years in the wilderness? No, you took up the tent of Moloch and the star of your god, Rathan, the images that you made to worship. So I will deport you beyond Babylon. That's in Amos 5, 25 through 27. We just read that. Glory be to God. Whoo, glory be to God. Oh, he's just blowing my mind this whole time, by the way. Just blowing my mind. <sighs> Glory be to God. Thank you, Abba Father. Oh, I'm so, y'all, I'm insanely unworthy. Blessed be the Lord. Our ancestors had the tabernacle of the testimony in the wilderness. Just as he spoke to Moshe, commanded him to make it according to the pattern he had seen. Our ancestors in turn received it and with Joshua brought it in when they dispossessed the nations that God drove out before our fathers until the days of David. He found favor in God's sight and asked if he might provide a dwelling place for God or for the God of Yahov. But it was Solomon, Shlomo, who built him a house. <laughs> However, the Most High did not dwell in the sanctuaries made with hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne. Who and earth my footstool. What sort of house will you build for me, says the Lord, or what is my resting place? Did not my hand make all these things? Ooh, glory be to God. That's in Isaiah chapter 66, verses 1 and 2. You stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears. You were always resisting the Holy Spirit. As your ancestors did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? They even killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You received the law under the direction of angels and yet have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were enraged in their hearts and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled by the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven. He saw God's glory with Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, look, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they screamed at the top of their voices, covered their ears and together rushed against him. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. They were stoning Stephen as he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And saying this, he fell asleep. Bless be the Lord. Abba Father, thank you. Thank you for the testimony of Stephen. Thank you for the testimony of all your prophets and all your people. Father God, bless your holy name. I believe you. And I love you. And you're beautiful. And I ask you to bless me familiar in the mighty name of Jesus. And I ask you to keep me familiar in the mighty name of Jesus. And I ask you to be gracious to them in the mighty name of Jesus. And I ask you to make your face to shine upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, grant us thy shalom in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, bless you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah and amen. Glory be to God, familiar. He is beautiful. I pray that we all know more and more every single day just how beautiful he is. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Glory be to God, thy familiar.